Representatives with uh, Affinity Lighting with us here uh, oh, this good. evening because one of the articles that we'd like to discuss is uh, the replacement of lighting. Uh, I know it's a late um, worn article to be submitted, but it's also a huge opportunity for the town. Would you like to start with that one first? Not with you? Sure. We After get I get done a brief. I don't normally have a message, but um, this year I thought. Uh, a message about the overall um, thought behind the Warren articles was uh, would be prudent. Several years ago when I took over as Public Works Director, there was a common message from the members of government and the public that the Public Works Department did not have a plan. That without any plan, the taxpayers and local officials could not collectively get behind Warren articles and initiatives. For the last several years, the overall plan of the department is presented in the Capital Improvement Plan. Each year it is adjusted as projects get completed and others come to the attention of the department. While most items are known and can be quantified, some like the force main replacement were not known or planned for. We realize that these projects throw a little wrench into the gears and therefore can slow or stop the CIP. Regardless of the sp speed of the CIP, it is our duty as director and deputy director to keep our focus on the long range direction of the department. At the same time, we are ever vigilant of the risks and opportunities the town faces. For these reasons, you will see we are bringing forth for the town's consideration an article to bring larger water mains to our complex in an effort to address the fire risk. We take advantage of opportunities. We are also bringing forward an article to convert a lower power usage LED street lights and that have the opportunity to save the town $1 million over the next 10 years in electricity costs. To address the overall cost of these projects, we are also including opportunities to lease equipment when possible so to spread the cost of the purchases out over years. In the end, we accept the decision of the elected leaders to determine the final course of the department and for the voters to determine our speed. The men and women of the Public Works Department stand ready to serve the residents and visitors of Hampton. So having made that, um, if you will, brief opening. Um, that was in part done because we realized that uh, fiscally it's a tough year. That not only did the voters approve uh, $11 million in a wastewater treatment bond opportunity last year, uh, work that needs to get done, but they also um, overwhelmingly, I think it was 96 percentage, uh, voted to back the uh, force main. Uh, vote in August. Uh, in my, I'm now 59, uh, moderator in another town, that's the first time I've ever seen or experienced a uh, town having to go back to the polls for raising a significant amount of money. I um, was involved in uh, reconsidering school votes in the past in a separate meeting, but that certainly was a significant chunk of money to be raised. But in keeping with that, I still believe that it's our responsibility, Jen and I, is to uh, point the direction of the department, work with the town uh, to uh, forestall, if you will, or foresee through the CIP some of the issues that we face as a community. Uh, with that, I will go on to, because we want to get these young gentlemen home so they, <laughs> <laughs> so they have uh, meetings too. Uh, with Affinity Lighting, I have with me, and. Uh, so I don't slaughter names, uh, Mr. Steve Lieber and Mr. John Brannigan. And um, gentlemen, if you just maybe 15 minutes, give the board a brief overview as to what an LED light is and how and why we asked you to come before us. Yeah. Thank you. So first of all, thank you very much for having us. Our company, Affinity LED Light, we're based in Dover, New Hampshire. Okay. Uh, we manufacture the Cobra Head street lights that we've done in surrounding communities right there in Dover, and we hire U.S. veterans to do the work. Mm. We've been competitively selected on the seacoast uh, to name just a few towns. We're about 35 towns in Eversource territory, but you've seen our lights in Portsmouth, Dover, Rochester, Summersworth, Farmington, Greenland, Newington, Newfields. The list is long. Um, here in Unitil territory, uh, the town has a fantastic opportunity to uh, do your conversion and really enjoy great savings and a great benefit. Unitil's put together a good <coughs> business case. They haven't changed their tariff, 
meaning how the lights are billed, but they've come back to offer a fantastic incentive program as well as an on-bill financing uh, opportunity for the rest of the project. Yeah. Um, so Steve and I want to talk to you a little bit about that this evening and also the basics, as Chris just asked, the basic of an LED is if you look at your current town inventory, some of your lights are fairly old. <laughs> you have uh, <coughs> mostly uh, high pressure sodium technology, which is that orange glow of light that you see throughout the community. You do have some mercury vapor, which is the whiter bright light. And uh, uh, you have older, uh, older technology, again, more mercury lights than we've seen in some other communities. <coughs> what that means is your savings potential is fantastic. If we look at an older 100 watt mercury vapor light, we can put in a modern, locally made 25 watt LED. Those wow. kind of savings are fantastic. The lifetime of the equipment is estimated uh, well over 20 plus, 30 plus years, and it has a 10 year warranty uh, from our company as well. So really it's one of the few capital improvement projects that a town or municipality or city can face that has such a solid payback with instantly improving the quality of light, Good. reducing uh, maintenance and other hassles with aging infrastructure and aging light. Our product is also both Dark Sky and American Medical Association friendly. So if you've heard and seen some of the articles that are out there about what color temperatures and what kind of LEDs to use, we're in the wheelhouse of what your citizens and residents would be concerned about. We would make a good product. To touch uh, just briefly on the, 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 the top end numbers, uh, the town of Hampton uh, today uh, under the current existing tariff on the legacy lighting, you're spending uh, about $217,000 a year to light your streets. Uh, <coughs> under the new tariff, uh, the LED tariff that is currently in place with Unitil, uh, the town would save 30%, uh, $65,000 a year um, by switching over to LED. That is aside from an incredible improvement that you'll see in terms of just the light values and the quality of light that is out on the streets. Um, it also represents um, on the, the, the green and clean side uh, almost 425,000 kilowatt hours uh, a year, which directly represents not only a reduction in carbon footprint for the, uh, for the town's contribution, but also those $65,000 in savings. The overall cost of uh, converting uh, the the to the LED street lights is two hundred and forty-four thousand. Um, the uh, uh, there is also a net book value of undepreciated asset value that is uh, due back to Unitil of one hundred and forty-eight thousand. Um, so all combined, you're looking at um, you're looking at three hundred and ninety thousand dollars. We. Um, we have worked with Unitil, as John mentioned, on a program. It is expected that Unitil will confirm for the town over $120,000 worth of incentives to support that. So you're talking about, you know, 30% of the, of the total cost of mm -hmm. not only the installation, but of the netbook value that is due um, to, uh, to Unitil. Uh, is covered by that incentive. So the <coughs> net cost, net net is $270,000. Now as John mentioned, um, uh, well, first of all, at $270,000 with a $65,000 a year savings, mm -hmm. you're looking at uh, just over four years to actually pay back the cost of the lights. Oh. That's the return mm -hmm. um, with your savings. So these lights will pay for themselves very quickly. Mm -hmm. And given the fact that over 10 years, which is our warranty period, you're saving 600 and almost $650,000. And the life of the lights at 1.2 million, um, it's a, a significant uh, benefit financially for the town. Uh, the last piece is, as John mentioned, I just wanted to, to bring that up a, a little more. Unitil has put a, a unique program together that will actually uh, allow you to recuperate the costs almost immediately after you've spent them um, for installing the lights and also not to have to actually pay that net book value payment to, um, to the company, um, which we haven't seen before. Uh, we're, we're working with Central Maine Power um, uh, municipalities currently 
uh, including just being awarded the city of Augusta, Maine, mm -hmm. uh, to put in a complete smart city for them. Um, and uh, it, it's, a, it's an outstanding opportunity because they will take and recover that with the cost that you're already spending because it'll be on bill. So you'll basically be paying with your savings. Uh, the intention from, uh, from Unitil on those numbers, if you don't mind, John, no, yeah. take a look. The intention from Unitil is um, to put a um, is to put a total of a forty five hundred dollar cost approximately on your bill for the cost of your um, for the cost of your lighting uh, that you'll be recovering basically back um, the both the investment that you've made and the net book value you'll be paying that. Uh, and come out approximately a thousand dollars a month positive, mm -hmm. even with the new wow. equipment, and that is for five years. After five years, you'll recuperate all the sixty-five thousand dollars savings. Mm. Uh, so it's a it's a great program, uh, and and certainly we uh, we'd be honored to be able to support you. Uh, uh, John mentioned we've we've uh, across the the state of New Hampshire, we've already um, converted about thirty-five communities. Wow. Um, and uh, we've also been awarded the NHDOT project for highways and turnpikes that will be commencing soon as well. Mm. Can you just show what one of the lights looks like? So yeah. We, we brought a sample light to show you. We like to bring samples. Um, <laughs> and they didn't even fall down the stairs and break it. <laughs> exactly. I offered them the elevator. <laughs> so. So this is the exact equipment that we would be proposing to put up here in town. Oh my. Um, if you think about the old legacy street lights that you have, you're used to seeing them 25 feet yeah. up in the air. So they're actually about more than twice the size of this. This is a much smaller, low, lower profile. The LED chips, which actually uh, produce the light, are, are here with a lens. And what the lens does is help to reduce glare and direct the light to where hmm. you need it. Wow. As I mentioned, uh, assembled here in Dover, we use components from all over the world, Cree branded chips, Meanwell drivers, Wago power collect connections, and what that really means is kind of our intel inside, what makes it work, and what allows us to give uh, a very good industry leading warranty of 10 years. Steve has a, a plug here, and we're going to plug this in and try not to shine it right directly at anybody. Some of these, you, you, they have some of these down the beach. On the state property, where they have some LED they lights. Oh. It's a different type of lighting, but yes. Yeah, it's a different type of lighting, but right. it, it gives you that similar. You mean know, like on the buildings? On the buildings, and some of the, they have poles they have on the. On the hmm. Street lights in front of the, uh, the state park. The yeah. state park. Some interesting comments, uh, uh, including from uh, Vic oh. St. Pierre, who's the director of, uh, of DPW over in the city of Claremont, which was one of the mm -hmm. first communities to convert uh, about three years ago is uh, one of the comments that came from him was the, the stars have come back in the city of Claremont. John was mentioning about the, um, about the, uh, uh, the, the fact that there's zero uplighting and being dark sky compliant means yeah. that the light is only, it's all directed by optics. Wow. Uh, it's lenses that actually throw the light where you want them, which is out yeah. on the streets and a little bit behind the poles on sidewalks for public safety but uh, but not anywhere else wow. so um, so you'll see it's a fairly buttery glow it's not uh, yeah, it's, it's it's not the orange uh, glow that you see with uh, a fairly low <laughs> color rendering um, uh, Jacob Levinson from the city of Portsmouth took a picture of a five dollar bill under a high pressure sodium light on his iPhone and he had an orange five dollar bill <laughs> that was looks like a picture. Monopoly, then he took a picture of um, the, the same $5 bill under one of the street lights installed, and it was a green $5 bill. So the, the grass is going to be green again, um, and uh, the color will come back to the town um, through, uh, through better lighting. That's amazing. Questions? Yes. Um, I believe when Fred was discussing this with us, that, um, for one thing, don't say ornamental lighting to me, but um, <laughs> that we would get rid of, we're not just talking about, we're not talking about light bulbs actually at all, are we? And the fixtures that hold the light bulbs now would go. 
right? The arms that you see sticking out from the poles, yeah. they would literally take that whole, what I call it, yeah. cobra head. Cobra like head, yeah. You take the cobra head off, and they literally would put this right on the arm. And mount it. it would only take three months to change out all the fixtures in your town. Right. I, yeah. I love it. Now, what what happens, I don't know, how, what's the life of one of those... The new fixture, twenty. Yeah, well, the, the fixture probably lasts, but you sh you show that that thing underneath. The, oh, it looks the like LED yeah, but it, plastic all, or something, right? Mm. Now, what happens when that runs out? Do you, is the whole fixture replaced, or is it? That's a great question. So we do have our ten-year warranty. We mm -hmm. anticipated life on this project again at about twenty-seven years. Mm -hmm. Since we make it locally, if something happens to part of the components, the lens, the driver, some part of it, mm -hmm. we can repair it locally. Um, that's one of the things we're fairly committed to. So we do encourage town to buy a few fixtures for a safety stock. If okay. someone was texting and hit a pole and the light came down, yeah. you'd have another light to uh, put back up. And then if that one was still uh, serviceable, we could potentially repair it and replace it with... Uh, so it's not a problem either repairing it or after the 10 years or whatever it is, you can still get the same type of lighting. That's right. I love Serviceable this. parts. But yeah. the lifetimes, uh, the, the Department of Energy, because of what they considered to be a, a terrible failure of the implementation of compact fluorescent light, the CFL bulbs, mm -hmm. uh, put in some uh, pretty significant uh, requirements and rules and regulations in terms of development and right. marketing of LED technology. And we're required uh, to have these certified by the okay. utilities to uh, have third, all third-party testing done. And part of that is to, to certify the lifetime of them because okay. we use a, a, a high-end Cree LED chip. Yeah. Cree has to actually provide wow. the proof. Um, and uh, the, the fixture's rated at 120,000 hours. Wow. If you think about um, 12 hours a day across 20 years, these lights will burn in 20 years about 86,000 hours. Yeah. Wow. And, and what fixtures, what LEDs don't like, although you know traditionally they don't like heat, mm -hmm. um, we don't see as much heat in the Northeast as we see in other parts of the country. Yeah. And yeah. the other way that we've uh, we've worked to be able to extend the life of them. They're actually through this Energy Star uh, calculation that's provided. These are 260,000 hour chips wow. uh, because they're underdriven, meaning we, we put less power through them yeah. than they're actually capable of, of providing. That looks just like an ordinary little, I don't know, piece inserted. It's amazing that you'd get light out of that. Yeah. I love it. I love yeah. this idea. Well, you answered my question on the how long you said three months for the project to get done. Right. So if it got approved in March, it would, could be done by the summer. Yeah, I mean they've got mm -hmm. other projects they'd have to blend in, mm -hmm. but yeah, I love it. it could it could be done throughout the summer. And mm -hmm. it would just go and replace whatever we have a regular light now. We'd have one of those. They just literally, if they've explained it to me, is literally take the cobra head off, unplug, and plug this in. They're standard connections. Yeah. yeah, one of the additional things that we do is we work with Unitil. We get an inventory, the list in your town of what you've been paying for. And then we do a GIS audit. We go out and find every light in the street and make sure it's really there. Wow. Um, and then we take a quick glance at the map, make sure that everything looks appropriate lighting plan, that uh, you know, they're, they're, we found a few neighborhoods in Portsmouth that were really overlit, and we were able to save the town additional money by putting in a 25 watt typical residential type light where a 65 might have been the prescriptive one for one change if we had just followed wow. what the utility had in place. Mm -hmm. So we do that as well, that's part of the uh, cost that's built in. And then yeah, to Chris's point, we go through, we plan, we see what other work we have on the schedule and for 872 lights we could uh, you know, fairly quickly get through town being really mindful of school schedules, summer, you know, we know this is a tourist town and. Um, staying out of everybody's way when the revenue uh, is happening. So, thank you, Jim. Yeah, a couple of things. So the the the, the, the money savings great, the energy savings great, and and the uh, light not going up is great. I think that that's mm -hmm. a tremendous thing there. So I think it's a really nice ornamental light. I think will include. The town. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I like that ornamental light too. But one, one of the things you're mentioning right here is Jen knows why we're yes. saying this. 
Um, so what you're saying is now is the town will actually own the lights instead of Unitel owning the lights? Correct. Because I heard you say that the town would have yeah. a couple of spares. Right. Right. Yeah. Who puts those spares up if there's a problem? Is that Unitel or is it the town? It could be. It could be the town. It could be Affinity Lighting. It could be Unitel. Uh, under the tariff, uh, under the Unitel tariff, the town will have the option to make that decision when the time comes, whether to service their own lights or whether to ask Unitel's uh, service. Uh, as so I know we have some program. street lighting down on C Street and some of the leaded streets for right. chance that we do it ourselves. Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. Correct. With, so. with, we do with a hired electrician. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So. They also have a suggestion about those, but that'll be in the future. <coughs> okay. We're going so, modern. Could I have something? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, Chris, you've put together a warrant article, and uh, one of the, the, the uh, appropriation for this year would be 245241 Right. Is, is that a one, the one time uh, both uh, yes. parts and installation go into that? Yes. Sure. And on the chart that we were given, there's a, uh, on the uh, financial summary, uh, there's a 60 months copay. Is that right? Did I get that wrong? Mr. Lieber would have to answer. Uh, that's correct. Your, um, your net book value, uh, the, so the, the cost is 244000 for installing for the equipment and the installation. Uh, we expect Unitil will, uh, will secure $122,000 in an incentive that would be a rebate back to you once the installation is wow. done. Then they will also secure the, the financing for the balance of that cost, essentially paying you back for the other half of that cost by putting it on your bill for 60 months so you're paying with your savings. Uh, the combination of, uh, and then the second piece that they're adding is the net book value cost of 148000 that is due to buy out the undepreciated assets of the old equipment. You wouldn't have to write that check to Unitil. They would immediately, they would capture that back also across 60 equal payments. So in essence, you're not writing the $148,000 check to Unitil, and they will recap they will capture that um, those funds across 60 months after the installation is completed and then secondly you will recover not only the cost of the rebate but your copay cost of the project after you've paid us you'll be collecting that back from unitil it's not a credit it's actually mm -hmm. a, in a check and you'll pay that across your share absent of the incentive back also for 60 months Net net, you'll be about a thousand dollars cash positive with all new lighting per month uh, for the, those first five years, and then then the the entire sixty five thousand goes to the bottom line after five years. Yeah, uh, when we, when a similar type of project was done in the Lane Memorial Library uh, with Unitil, un unfortunately it was expected, and and I think it did end up paying for itself with the rebates. But nevertheless, the town was required to enter into a loan document as part of that program and whenever we get into a loan we end up having to present that in a warrant article mm. and I, I just don't want to lose the fact that that this may not be the only piece we have to present depending on the document they ask us to sign yes and more more, moreover if it's a loan document that binds future town meetings it may require a 60 percent vote and that did not that passed very well but we, we had enough time to deal with that, to put that article okay. together. Mm -hmm. I just didn't want to lose the fact that there may be an additional warrant article needed. Right. Mm -hmm. I do want, want to mislead the board that Mark has not had the chance to fully vet this and or had his um, mm -hmm. pen to the, uh, to the article. The actual verbiage. And I think that that's really important because we've done things like this in the past. If you call the asset management... Uh, study that we did or the asset management program which was a sixty thousand dollar loan with principal yeah. forgiveness of sixty thousand mm -hmm. we still had to raise and appropriate the whole sixty thousand right. enter into the agreement and go back out the same with yeah. the um, pump station uh, the pump station excuse me the uh, efficiency at the wastewater the treatment plant piece. Uh, that we did so Correct. I am I'm with all of you and, and we hope 
that uh, Mark, you can go through and make sure that we're using the right language uh, on that warrant article for what will be the raising appropriate appropriate clause because we've also used as offset by. Like you'll see that in the paving grant one, if we get money back, mm -hmm. it gets offset by certain costs. So that okay. the town, when they see the warrant article, yeah. sees that it's really a, a value. And I, I also wanted to ask Affinity, uh, were you involved in the uh, lighting of the Little Bay Bridge? The Scammell Bridge, the yes, Scammell sir. Bridge. Scammell Bridge, yeah. thank you. Uh, <laughs> You're every welcome. Every day, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's still paying for the electricity. I know. <laughs> we, we adopted the bridge. We, I um, know you did. We converted the bridge to LED and uh, working with, uh, with partners at NHDOT and the two direct involved towns, which were the town of Durham and the, and the city of Dover, uh, we were able to convert it over to an agreement, a public-private partnership that allowed us to adopt the bridge uh, in oh. perpetuity, let's oh say. My goodness. Um, That's and uh, we're, we're, we're pretty happy to do that. Um, we, we've been very fortunate in the Seacoast area and across the state, actually, and it was just a nice way for us to, to give back. Yeah, wow. that, that beautiful bridge was dark for some, some months, and uh, I thank you every day. And That's great. Uh, uh, and uh, there questions from the board? Uh, reference this, the this, infinity this, light. this is exciting. Well, one question I have is we have a number of uh, private entities in town, mm -hmm. uh, a couple trailer parks and stuff like that that have their own lights. Is there a way to, for them to be able to buy lighting? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, luckily, being in Unitil territory, they have the opportunity to explore that with us. If you were across in uh, Eversource, not to pick on the other utilities, they don't allow for private area lights, the trailer parks of the world, to convert at the same time. So we would, in, we would encourage, if there are properties that we should look at, um, we'd, we'd be happy to work with. I think we have some private streets and some and the mm -hmm. private uh, mm -hmm. uh, we do. communities that w would really benefit from this, and I would think they would, they would probably like to be very interested in it also. No, it's great, and it's, it's also a really good exercise for town to have that consistency of color and lighting yes. quality. Yes. Um, I'm, re I'm actually just doing a joint project with the town of Henniker and New England College. Um, and I'm told it's the first joint project they've done in over 20 years wow. because they really believe in unifying the lighting in town, getting a good quality of light, and bringing that public-private mm. relationship in. Well, it, it, it's a different type of lighting, too. I, I, mm. I have two uh, LED lights that are on, one's on my barn and one's on my garage, and they light up my parking area plus part of the street out there, and, it, and it, it's a third of the cost or a quarter of the cost of what it used to be. Mm -hmm. And it's a much better lighting. So, wow. absolutely. Yep. So, all right. So, Thank you. we we have this one article. We'll yep. let him go through it, and then we'll bring it back at another next week or something. Probably going to need a copy of the contract for you to tell. Yes, please. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. So, I'd say if the if the town was obviously we understand there's there's steps and processes if the town's willing to uh, you know kind of to commit to the savings and the next steps, mm -hmm. we yep. would make sure to bring in your Unitil representative. Um, everything that we've stated as far as anticipated rates and tariff, it is under a tariff or a law structure, so they would confirm our estimations of cost and savings and all that for you. Excellent. Yeah. Appreciate Good. It. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Thank you very Thank you much. much. Thank you for coming in and showing oh. us the product. Oh, of course. Thank you for having us. Moving on to the, is it the water line would be the next one you'd want to discuss? Um, the first one we have in our park, uh, packet. Vehicles. Is vehicles. Vehicles. Oh, oh, so you might as well get right to the nitty gritty right fast. All right. Um, the this is one of the those uh, tougher articles where you look at it or I look at it and say um, somebody may be looking for a break um, in the overall uh, plan of the department, but uh, we do have to bring this forward. Um, there are several vehicles within this. One is a um, six-wheel dump truck with plow, wing, and sander. Mm -hmm. um, it would be replacing Unit 40, which is a 1997 International with 80,000 miles on it. 80,000 doesn't sound like a lot, but this is almost reaching a 30-year uh, vehicle. Um, so far this year, we've been nursing it along. Uh, it's only taken $3,000 in parts this year. Last year it took $5,870 worth of parts. Um, but this is one of those mainline vehicles that we do rely on for snow removal. Um, 
we are also asking to replace a one ton dump truck with plow and wing. It's unit 30. Um, basically, it has already been benched. Um, it cost us $56.90 in parts last year. The frame is essentially gone. Um, our lead mechanic, uh, Joe Gallagher, uh, recommended that we literally bench it. So uh, it is not available for, uh, I don't believe it's available for snow removal this year because no, it will not pass inspection. Mm. Uh, we're asking, it's, we've come around that the three quarter ton trucks that we do use for plowing uh, streets like uh, some of the courts, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Jones, uh, over off of, uh, I'm thinking of one Shaw, and then Beach Plum Way. Beach Plum Way can only be yeah. cleared with a pickup truck. So we do need some of them. To give you an idea, uh, Unit 26, a 2004 Silverado, uh, 83,000 miles on it. Um, in the last two years, for 5,000 in parts alone in the last two years. Uh, that's probably a third of its original purchase price every other year in part, every two years in parts. Mm -hmm. Same thing with Unit 16, a 2004 Silverado. It's got a whopping 115,000. We have spent in the last two years $13,500 in parts. We're literally rebuying that truck Yuck. every two or three years. Uh, we are looking to uh, replace two of our sidewalk maintenance vehicles. Units, if I've got the right numbers, units 53 and 63. They are these articulating track, sidewalk tractors. Um, I'll be honest with you, I'm not really fond of them. Why? Their original and replacement cost is between $130,000 and $136,000 per unit. Mm. Why would I try and clear track sidewalks with a unit that costs that much when I can buy a whole dump truck, six wheel dump truck with plow and wing for 176 that'll do far more than these would ever do. Mm -hmm. The other issue I have is the 2004 trackless. We're having very difficulty getting parts because these parts come out of Canada. Yeah. Uh, the, we've used so far in 18, $9,284 in parts to keep one of these going. Mm. Uh, the, the, um, the transfer in gearing between the uh, the nice diesel motor out back and it's uh, to the power out front is really where these things fail. Uh, we've stripped gears. Uh, they're used hard, I'll admit. But uh, for $130,000, I don't think, you know, uh, this is where Mary Louise and I agree huh? that I should str strategically look at certain pieces of equipment and evaluate whether or not for the dollars this town is spending, if these pieces of equipment give you the best value for your buck. At that price, they don't. Um, we've asked the dealer how much it would the trade-in value for him was. He said $500 each. Reason being, he has 26 of them in his lot and he can't get rid of any of them. Why? <laughs> Nobody else wants them either. Um, so um, there's something that pieces of equipment that I can't honestly um, support anymore as a director. Um, what would you replace them with? Actually, we the companies of John Deere, Kubota, Bobcat, and Wacker all make sidewalk tractors that basically they look like a Bobcat, a yeah. skid steer. The great part is uh, you buy the basic unit for between lowest 50000 highest seventy, but you put a $9,000 snowblower on the front end of it. And when the nine thousand dollar snowblower goes, yeah. you put on another nine thousand yeah. dollar snowblower and keep right on going. Yeah. You yeah. don't have to um, put nine thousand in parts in it that you can't mm -hmm. really get. Yeah, um, that's really what I would do, and I would be using those other pieces of equipment with sidewalk brooms on them to keep the sidewalks clean. I'd be using them with mower decks on the front. I'd be using them uh, to, to mow the sides of the roads. I, they'd have far more versatility than these pieces of equipment do. Or a bucket. Or a bucket, yes. So. Yeah, they have, they have a lot more versatility. Than, and um, 
I guess that said enough about those. In an effort to, um, again, look at the overall cost, that biggest piece of equipment, the six-wheel dump truck, um, I do have a cost of purchase at 176 872 but I have a five-year price, a lease price of 38718 So literally we could pull off, uh, can't quickly do the math, but let's say 130000 right out of this article if the board were to decide to follow the same tack that we did with the um, refuse trucks, and that mm -hmm. is to lease them over a five-year period. It would be a lease to own. And I understand the article would have to be rewritten with the yeah. back out clause in it. But that is Mary your Lewis. choice. I like the idea of leasing so we don't have old stuff kicking around and you can renew the lease or get lease new vehicles. Now, I flag... Six vehicles here, Chris, and the 5363, 2630, 40, and 43. Mm -hmm. um, now, what's going to happen to them? You're showing on 30 that it's already been benched. How all, all these get, get all these get traded in? Gonna, they will even on a lease. You can trade it in. Yes, on with Mac on. It would be a Mac lease. They would take Unit 40. I don't. You were not talking sure. John Deere and stuff. What? I was on the snow sidewalk oh. maintenance units that were oh, shown okay. before. Oh, okay. Okay. But the Unit 40 would be replaced with a Mac. Okay. Because what drives me crazy is the old stuff sitting there. You don't need it. You don't right. need it sitting on your lot. You want it out of your hair. I want it out of your hair. All I, the current I like this. steel, I call it, for, for rolling stock that is out back is already expected to leave the yard when the other equipment is delivered. Yes. 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 I like this. When we put together the one for the dump truck, <laughs> uh, there was a piece of uh, one of the international uh, yeah. refuse collection trucks that had been sitting there for four years. Yeah. It was part of the deal. They had to take the truck. They said, well, that's it's not true. worth much. I yes. didn't ask you what it was worth. I just said, you so, have to give me a trade-in value on the truck, and they, they did. So when we get a nice new inventory list, when we right. get through this and get through the vote, yep. then a lot of these little tens are going to go bye-bye. Right. Bless you. Yeah. Thank you. I like that. And so the item you're talking about recommending as a, a lease to own would be in a separate article? So that it would, you, we could do it that way. Mm -hmm. Yes, the, that's, I believe that's the way we did it before. It was we yeah. broke it up. Yeah. yeah, but that again, and I bring these options forward. Uh, I don't get to make. I leave it to this board to make how how you want to present to the town how yeah. to finance or purchase yeah. these types of items. And to clarify, so if we go forward with this article as written, the dollar value needs to be four hundred thirty-two thousand five hundred fifty-five. Try that again, Jen. It would be 432 three, two. Five, five, five. Five, five, five. We received uh, quotes as late as uh, yesterday okay. uh, for some of the yeah. trucks. So I want to make sure we have the right value for Good. keeping in mind that this came up with other boards, sanders, plows, weights, all mm -hmm. inclusive. Right. Would, is there uh, anything with these that it, we might be better off to just sell them outright versus yeah. trade in? Well, for instance, on the, the two 2004 pickup trucks and, and the 30... No. Crap. What What's happening is <laughs> if, when those go out to bid, and, and Liberty has gotten the bid in the last couple of times, and the reason why they get the bid is, for instance, I remember a couple of years ago, all, of, all the truck, all the bidders had a base value of 27, 27, 20. Everybody did. Then they had, they were within cents on all the options where Liberty won the bid and others didn't. Liberty gave, gave us $2,000 for something everybody else was only willing to give us $500 for. So that is repeatedly happens with every one of those bids, and that's why I keep these rust buckets, if you will, in the yard and just don't ask the board to dispose of them as surplus and haul them to a junk dealer because the town gets more value as a trade-in during the bidding process. Well, and I'm just saying that the two trackless, I'm sure you can get more than $500 for them. Probably in the steel value alone. Right. right. That's you know. why I'm saying it. I would, I would rather leave you the option. I would to, agree. To 
I think that that's where it's important, you know, the replaced vehicles to be traded in if deemed to be prudent by the public works director, the town manager, and the board of selectmen. Correct. I think so that's... So that that leaves an option for trading them and in I, I, I just or think, not. You know, at $500, I mean, I think you could get more from this than the steel alone. Would agree. I think that's mm -hmm. what happened with the, the solid waste truck. It was worth more in steel than it was in mm -hmm. correct. any other item. Um, I have a question. So we have a new number, 432555. And how much did you say the dump truck is the big item on there? One, it's like 180000 180000 Okay, so if we divided that over five years, it's you say it's going to be like 38000 What about the lease paperwork right here? 33718 is what they said. Oh, 33718? Perfect. So that would probably ideally be its own separate warrant article because of the way we did it last time. Correct. So we could take that this whole amount. Lease. Paper, oh, thank you. That we oh, got. Nice. Good. You see the five-year lease. Excellent. The, uh, second figure down. Oh, okay. That's excellent. They do have a three-year lease option if that's what the town chooses. But so 38, sorry, 38, not 33. So we would only have to have, with the five-year lease, that 38, would... 38718? 38718 yeah. would be the tax mm -hmm. effect. For this year. For this year. Right. For that. Now keep in mind that it takes almost nine months to get a truck, so this time next year, so that truck we may still be waiting for. Uh, right. So, but yes, it would be towards the end of fiscal year 19 when you would have to make that payment. Yeah. So if that's in a separate warrant article, this 432555 is reduced by 180? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Could, Chris, could you identify the numbers on the on these two, the six wheel dumps? Which unit six, one, unit forty is the minute. six wheel dump. Unit four, forty. There it is, right there. The, okay, the international forty nine hundred. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Good. And so they, on this lease, I don't see it has one of those non-appropriation clauses, but they'd be willing to do that? Yes, it would, it would probably be with the same Kansas City Finance Bank and Lending Authority that Mac uses. I have another question for Chris. You said that you have to wait for the truck. Would you, if we bought it, do you have to wait? We literally have to order it and they have to build the truck. Okay. It's not right. sitting in a yard somewhere. All right. Good. The lease doesn't okay. make the uh, okay. waiting right. time le longer or less. All right. right. Okay. Thank you. And you're talking five-year lease? That's, yes. Because yeah. you've got two options here. Given what we've been through in Warren articles over yeah. the last two years, yes. Good. I, I like that. Suggest. Okay. Okay. Any, okay. any other questions doing? on this? Do we do we want to? Uh, I like the separate article with the lease and the replacing the other Jim? vehicles. Jim, sorry. That's okay. Clean Chris, so you're saying you saying that that I mean these absolutely have to go. The, I mean, they do not absolutely have to go. Um, what my biggest concern is um, my maintenance budget. Yeah. yeah. Um, if you look at three lines that I'm consistently over by. Into the tune of uh, this truck at thirty-eight thousand is is a third of what I'm spending on maintenance. Mm -hmm. um, if I can start to get rid of some of these yes. older trucks, um, that's really where I can start to s we can start to save the town some money, Excellent. some real money. Um, we run a summary. Um, This is what, 18's numbers? Uh, 137,000 in parts this year, what? just to keep the refuse trucks cold. Yeah. So getting those two trucks arriving later this month into to next month will take a big ding out of that. I've got another article in here for refuse trailer. Um, I can lease one for 19,000 a year, it cost me 14,000 in parts this year just to maintain oh. the ones we have. Oh. So, um, so the longer we wait, all we do is we just put more parts into them and push the cost down the road. That's okay. Thank you. Having just rebuilt an old four Silverado, I know how much they hmm? the the bodies on them go. Yep. And the, and the frames go. They have, they have a lot of frame issues, so I, I, I can see no problem with that. 
Sure. The other big problem is, and we, we come to it every year, is we had a wash down facility. We might get a little bit more out of these vehicles, but that that time and time again gets voted down. You know, if, we, if these vehicles had a wash down facility, they could be washed down and get the salt off them. Also, yeah. if we had the storage inside for them, mm -hmm. we, can, we can do them. Right. May I make a suggestion when you are at the actual deliberative session and you put the, uh, you show whatever you're asking for on mm -hmm. the monitors and whatever. If you could, in, a, in addition to showing the lease price or the purchase price for the new unit, show the cost of maintenance. maintenance. What it's cost us to keep the old crummy thing running. We will do that. Thank you. So do we want to move this article forward yes. knowing the fact that there will be a second warrant article dealing with the lease, uh, the lease purchase? I'll, I'll move both of them. Oh, Just one more ad that I'd like to be considered is that when we're talking about the sidewalk maintenance vehicles, because we have options out there mm -hmm. and because we're talking about two, uh, the two that we have that are significantly more money, um, if you had bought those new, than what we're gonna be looking at in the future that we say up to two sidewalk vehicles because we wanna be able to get two. the best match for our needs. Correct. Um, whether that's to replace whatever combination. To replace two sidewalk yeah. vehicles. Up to yeah. two. Up so to if two. we only get one and it's more than half the price that we put in there, we still have the other one to okay. use Good. in trading value. It just, yeah. it keeps us uh, the ability to look at those attachments, Correct. maybe Good. get a better deal, be able to be more efficient with it. Good point. All right, so we have a motion and a second for two Warren articles. Who's One. second? Right. Well, I'll second it. Okay, there yeah. you go. Yeah, I, I have a, I don't have a problem. I say you guys need these trucks. I want them to get, I want you to get them all. Mm -hmm. I think we need to see the other one in the lease breakout, and I think whatever is remaining in this Warren article, we should take from the unassigned fund balance since a lot of this stuff should have been done a long time ago, in my view. So why don't we wait and get the wording back in right. these two articles yeah. as it's changed, and then we will bring them forward after that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that fair? Yeah. Okay. I just want to get past. Highway block rent. I'll move. I'll move that we put that on as is. The highway block ramp? Yeah, that's a routine. We have a motion to put that on. Uh, half half second. of it is being reimbursed yep. by the grant. All those in favor? Thank goodness. Unanimous. Easy enough. Road, I'll move, road Improvement Capital Reserve Fund. I'll move that as pretty much standard uh, 300000 to build up the fund. I'll and second it. Yeah. All those in favor? Unanimous. Yeah. Place the culvert system, Tuck Field and Park Avenue. So this one here, I know uh, last time you guys were talking about it, uh, Fred was fielding some questions for us. So um, it made me go, let me draw some maps here and sort of show what we're talking about uh, for each of the two drainage infrastructure projects that we're reviewing. Mm -hmm. uh, the culvert system for Tuck Field and Park Ave, if you can picture it, is basically the entrance, the one-way entrance in uh, to the Tuck Field parking area. Mm -hmm. There are, uh, in that, I don't know if it's gonna let me, oh, it will. That's right. one I built a little kid's playground, correct? Yes, exactly, and if you look at these yellow lines, and I know it's probably hard to see, but you have this one across the bottom of the screen that comes here, the one that comes in this way, and you have two coming from the top. Good Basically, grief. all of this Ugh. comes into that culvert that goes under Park Avenue, and that culvert is an existing 24-inch uh, corrugated metal pipe uh, it is deteriorating. It has seen its lifetime flash by. It's also undersized. Um, I did this just to give you an idea of how much of uptown this culvert takes. <laughs> I mean, that one pipe is taking all of this and thus causing some of the problems oh. that we're having uh, oh related God. to the overtopping in the Tuckville parking yeah. lot as far as uh, some surcharging out of the structures that are there. And they have that the problem when they, they built the new garage and surcharged it. Well, that and there's oh, probably... There's a picture of it. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. That could have been built up just a tad or more. <laughs> but, that, uh, this has to do with that culvert that goes under This that. is exactly all that water that comes down through here. I mean, it connects to the drainage that's right here at Town Hall. 
I mean, so it's everything out on High Street, comes down uh, Academy Ave till uh, portions of Winnicunit comes through the field, includes parts of Park Ave, uh, both east and west. Also includes everything up to High Street. Yes. So when we were looking at this culvert, uh, we started looking at what else would need to be done. Um, there is a sewer, the major sewer interceptor that goes right under it. So it's not as an easy fix as take out culvert, put in larger culvert. What we'll need to do is replace the structures uh, where these all join together into a larger structure and then replace with two barrels coming across and building a new head wall uh, at the outlet side. Um, and again, this goes back to something I've been saying, I think in every meeting I've been at since I've been in front of you guys lately, to get Park Avenue paved, which is in desperate need of being paved, these are the type of things that we need to fix. Uh, there's this culvert here. Uh, and then also where I wanted to talk to you today a little bit maybe perhaps of joining these two projects. This is the culvert about, what, 400 feet down the road that comes from Kids Kingdom uh, in Eaton Park. Is that the 71,000? I just, 71.5. Yeah. Um, I just added it, 246.5. If we, I'd like to see this paired. I'd like to see the two yeah. projects on one article. And, and that's where I was hoping that we could do that. And I did put together a draft article mm -hmm. um, for us to read. Yeah. But again, it, Mark has not had a chance to vet it. Yeah. But the intent would be to take both and actually say right in there what their we're trying to do. And, their, yeah. and this, right. this culvert here is completely eaten out right at the water line, right? It is. This is an open bottom. You can see in the picture down here, yeah. this is an arched culvert. Uh, once you go into King's Kingdom, there's one culvert that crosses through with yeah. a one-lane car width. Yeah. We would be replacing that and then come down to this arch culvert. And the best thing about this arch culvert is that there's no real, what's the word? known path yeah we know where it exits on the other side we've tried mounting gopros to surfboards and sleds and snake pipes and cameras and it just needs to all be redone could i say one thing sure i'm very glad you came in tonight to talk about these because the voters i know they get very frustrated one because we have 50 warrant articles and we all realize yeah. why we have 50 warrant articles but they don't understand and reading this when we talked about it last week I was not getting any of this and I didn't ask that was my own fault but I think that's what people need to understand like if they have a question maybe they should just ask they can ask one of us they can email me mm -hmm. or call me whenever they want yeah and uh, and a lot of the times it does Mary Louise has said this quite a few times sometimes just seeing the map you know right. seeing exactly. the picture exactly where yes. we're talking about you know in this one where you can see you have the culvert that, that you picture. cross over and you see the yellow line and yeah. you know what we're supposed to do and right. you know yep. something when you see this this is how much drainage in town it takes and you know here's the other mess of infrastructure and that would allow us to take some of the roadway money that you know hopefully gets approved and be able to apportion that to park yeah. Ave. the part i worry about this most is we have school buses that pass over that all the time. yes all the time yeah. and with it being rotted out the way it is we're just it's yeah. I'll, I'll move that we roulette. put these two together and lump sum two, I'll second it. 246 five. We were also thinking that we'd get a much better construction price if it was they were lumped one together. Project. It's Correct. one mobilization, it's Absolutely. one yes. you know, one contract. If I have a motion and a second, all those in favor? Unanimous. That this that does include the head wall work that you mentioned. Yes, yeah, so that way and it also yeah. one of the things that's very important about this when you're talking about an open stream bottom, uh, this is any PES permitting. So this will take some engineering permitting, not just straight out construction. Will it be open stream it when you're done too? Uh, most likely the stream rules require that. Okay. Okay. So the next one we have is the Elaine yeah, sewer so and drainage replacement. Yeah. So Elaine street drainage and sewer, basically uh, this is the infrastructure that if it gets done, it's uh, 1,100 feet of clay pipe. So this is the old brittle pipe that is known to break and fail. Yeah. It replaces 500 feet of the corrugated metal pipe that's down at the bottom where Richards and Elaine meets before it goes cross country over to, um, towards the plant. Um, this allows us to do something very similar to the Anne's Lane. Uh, we'll do that work and then come back and pave Elaine Street, but also while we're right there, Richard Street, which does already have the PVC sewer, but is in horrific shape. 
The paving. The paving. Okay. Okay. Questions of the board. Since Richard has the good pipe mm -hmm. already, uh, but stress that yep. in the article because I think it makes it more attractive to me understanding that you've already got the good pipe next door and this will kind of unify the, the project. Yeah, yeah if, you, if you refer to Richard Street and, and the uh, nice plastic or whatever yep. pipe. Any other questions? Is, is this all failing or? Well, it's clay. Well, that, I it's asked them. The clay pipe is, one, we don't put in six inch anymore. It, it would end up being an eight inch would be mm -hmm. PVC one to handle the capacity. But secondly, um, these projects, their secondary roles to address I and I. Is, you yeah. may well know that over 60% of the flow that we treat in the plant is uh, just groundwater, stormwater related. Uh, if in the next sewer bonding round, we're going to keep that project to, uh, uh, to what's truly necessary, if we have more of these projects to eliminate I and I, we can hopefully forestall the, the real need to uh, put in the two new aeration lagoons, the more, more expensive items. Mm -hmm. So what this not only does for me is, it, for us, is uh, secures the pipe for the next 50 years, mm -hmm. uh, allows us to pave the street, but also eliminates I&I &I into the plant. So Could that you just, I&I, &I, just so people at home watch yeah. it? Yeah, I&I is uh, inflow and infiltration. Mm -hmm. Um, every time it rains, like yeah. yesterday, um, we see a significant jump in the plant flow, anywhere from a half a million to, in some cases, two million gallons. Um, that's it's it's expensive to treat. Um, it keeps the size of the plant, um, the operating size high, and it takes up capacity that otherwise could yeah. go to serve other homes, other good purposes, mm. rather than just groundwater. The clay pipes leak. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. The the one, like. the one thing that I I want to think is this something that could we could hold off one year for? Yeah. That is a possibility. We again, this was part of our uh, CIP plan, mm -hmm. uh, similar way that we you know allocated for Lock Road and Winnicunit and Moulton and a few others. Um, yes, it is quite possible that this project could be, would it, would it be catastrophic to the town or the department? No, it would not be. My only concern is one, you've got a lot coming on on this year yeah. and yeah. Right. this we have a lot damage. right now. You have a lot going on right now. I understand that. Yeah. Uh, and I, I, I just want to overburden your department with this. Mm -hmm. There would be, you know, the, the lag is there would be some design time with this. This isn't something we, you know, open up the street tomorrow. In other words, a day after the. Mm -hmm. um, the only difference, I, I can look at it both ways. You know, if you were to say to me, which is which should come first, the chicken or the egg? We just talked about the Park Avenue. Park Avenue has two culverts. They're large, um, contributing areas that go to it, and also a road improvement that really needs to get done. Yeah. Um, this is smaller, but I just fear. You know, I don't want to send the wrong message that it's not important. Yeah. It, because, and I don't either. Yeah, it, it's one I of those I don't either. Things. I just want to make sure that we don't overload it and everything gets turned down. Exactly. Mm -hmm. and, and, and if that were the case, then it would be, you know, stressing the importance then our infrastructure project is Park Ave. You know, mm -hmm. let's really focus in on it and have everybody understand that it, it's this is the one we're doing this year. I tell you, ultimately, what I'd like to see, I would like to see a couple of, if not capital improvement funds, mm. but capital improvement articles every year knowing yeah. that we're going to spend yeah. 500,000 a year on drainage mm -hmm. we're going to spend mm -hmm. 500,000 a year on sewer right. Right. I, like I would it. like to see that and then sort of like how the road improvement does you pick up what you need when you she do needs. that Perfect. I would love to see that type of a, a setup but I make a motion that we hold this for a year I'll Se second it second all those in favor Unanimous. Okay. And you know, I, and, I, and try to get where I'm coming from. Is oh, I completely I would, understand. I think we we need to look at that over over the next year or two. Is, is yep. to doing that and having a million dollars, five hundred thousand for sewer, five hundred dollars, 
thousand for drainage, Definitely. and we do that each year. Okay. I, the only thing about putting in a capital improvement fund is, then you have to vote to take it out of the capital improvement fund. Mm -hmm. Where if we did a warrant article each year, like we yeah. do the uh, the paving, then you'd have that available to do that. Mm -hmm. Understood. Understood. Okay, trailer. Objection, trash trailer. I have a tr is this an extra? Chris, it would be an extra. An additional. Would be an extra. It would be an extra. Okay, so the how if they explain it first, yeah. and then we can ask questions. Well, the reason be for an extra is uh, the three, the big weekends: Memorial, uh, July Fourth, uh, Labor Day. Especially the July Fourth one. I'll give you for instance. Right now, we might might take in 250 tons a week. Uh huh. July 4th, in two days, we'll take in 400 tons. Oh. The problem that we've had in the last couple of years is we've literally had to empty, we've, we've filled a trailer with recyclables, glass, plastics, cardboard, whatever, mixed. We've literally had to take it over to the next to the sand pile and eject the whole load on the <laughs> ground so that we can put... Yeah refuse, i.e. that does need to go up to the landfill and waste management, back into that trailer because we have no capacity. Mm -hmm. So we literally will have uh, three or four trailers in the yard full uh, the, the day that the uh, transfer state or the waste management's landfill opens and we'll have only one or two full of recyclables. And then what happens, and, and thankfully CWT, our transportation hauler works with us they'll be at the yard at 4 a.m. in the morning oh. hauling out a trailer God. so they can be first in line at 6 a.m. Mm. but then they're back at 9 so they can do the second trailer and back at 2 so they can do the third trailer so it takes an extra ordinary effort on their part to get us back to where we have reasonable capacity so the transfer station can handle more tons coming through per day we can pick up more tons at the beach. I have no place to put it. Mm. And that's what this is to address. This is directly tied to a good economy on those <laughs> big weekends. Yeah. yeah, Chris, really quickly. Um, we're, we're not getting what we probably should get out of the state for the rooms and meals. Mary but they're Rodman. overwhelming us with, well, with trash, and is this causing a big problem for him? I have, I will certainly support this article, but uh, we are being um, messed up six ways from Sunday by that We have state. a motion by Mary Louise to accept. We have a second. I'll second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Place the water line to DW, uh, DPW facility. Get the sketch up. I do. I got a little verbiage to read. Hmm. Water line. Last year I noticed that the water usage for the wastewater treatment plant area was going up each month. Mike Doobie looked into it and was able to isolate the leak to the one inch water line between the plant and our offices. During the summer, we did dig up the line in an effort to isolate the leak. Given the overall length, it would be much easier just to replace the whole line. Mm -hmm. we, yeah. we dug holes where the water line was. We never found the leak. Um, in looking at our overall needs, I'm drawn to the need to also alleviate the fire risk in our office and garage area. Mm -hmm. I am reminded of the fire that destroyed the Henniker, New Hampshire Public Works garage back in January of 15. It destroyed five snowplow trucks and one grader with a combined worth of over one million dollars. Mm -hmm. We do not have a sprinkler system in our garage slash office building. Mm -hmm. uh, we currently have 15 pieces of equipment in our garage stored there uh, with a replacement value of 1.8 million dollars. Uh, mm -hmm. To address this issue, we've met with Aquarian Water with the intention of looping two mains they have bringing an eight inch main and hydrant through from their northern line uh, to our mm -hmm. facility. The first phase of the work will be to install just 540 feet of an eight inch water line right to our, our building. Uh, future phases would address 
the rest of our facility. Uh, we're talking with them about um, the overall cost to loop uh, the water line between Tide Mill Road and this line that you see on the northern part of our site. Go ahead, Mary Louise. Yeah. Um, you talk, you mentioned a one inch line. I hope this might be bigger than one inch. The new one will be eight inch. Ooh. Okay, the new one will be, will be 540 feet of eight inch main. Ah. And we would end up with a hydrant in our yard uh, over by the carpenter's shack. Oh, great. This location would then make it, uh, if there was ever a, a building expansion or a major improvement to our highway mm -hmm. complex garage, uh, this yeah. would be used for that. And I mentioned to Chris on his way in just to kind of confirm for me because I'm, I'm concerned about all the stuff that's on the public works lot. But apparently, um, Public Works does have a diagram or a plan or a plot or something showing where all the lines go. So that makes me feel better. Yep. The only thing that this line would conflict with is a, the sewer interceptor that comes down Pinneman Lane. Well, from Richard and it won't cross over. It waters Richard on the and Lane. Yeah. Water's on the other side. Uh, the only okay. thing this will conflict with is the ledge that's yep. already there. <laughs> We've dug a number of test, test pits, pits off the back side, exploring multiple paths, and this is the path with the least amount of ledge. Okay. But we would have some ledge to get rid of, to get the line down five and six feet as required. So again, you know, as I said in my opening statement, this is one of those things, well, I could avoid it every year and just keep paying a little higher water bill. Yeah. Um, I don't think that's what you really want me to do. Right. Uh, secondly, I don't think we should avoid the issue of mm -hmm. we could lose our public works garage. Yeah. It has happened in the past to other departments. Yeah. I believe if it's a, you know, there's another one that happened this week. Danbury. Danbury lost Danbury. their public works oh. garage. Yeah. Oh, I wasn't aware of that. So, yeah. so yeah. I knew there was another one that happened shortly. If they yeah. had a sprinkler system, they might not have yeah. lost so much equipment. Right. And in, in the in the Henniker situation and rereading the article today that's online, uh, they had finished plowing. They put all the equipment away. Mm. Uh, an hour later, they were called back. Or hey, uh, and the garage was fully engulfed and nothing wow. was was safe. I'll move to put this uh, on the warrant as sure. is. Second. Second. Yeah. I have a question. Oh. How much extra is the uh, water bill? I mean, right now. We're probably talking. It had tripled in three months, so it went from 200. It's probably up to 600. Okay. Yeah. And if if you had a fire at night with the trucks in there and stuff, just approximately, the loss would be how much? 1.8 million dollars, not including our office okay. loss itself. So we're t we're talking 85 thousand dollars. Now this doesn't put in a fire protection. System. It does not it's put the first the system phase, in. Right? First phase of it. Right. Correct. Yeah. I just want to make sure that that's yeah. known, but right. it also puts hydrants there. They're a lot closer. If they did need water yeah. until we're, right, yeah. yeah, right. So, yeah. so yeah. we're starting to protect, right, right. And and by the way, not that the department, this I have as director. I've only been what director four years, five years. I've seen three fires in the complex, mm -hmm. one in the electrical panel in the garage yeah. during the day, one in the carpenter shed that occurred overnight, was found at six o'clock in the morning, and one was in a transfer trailer. My first week. Yeah. So fire is a real yeah. uh, nemesis for the department. Absolutely. So we have a motion and a second. Yep. All those in favor? Unanimous. Next one we have the Sidewalk Capital Reserve Fund. I, I would frankly take this out. I think we have more to worry about right now than sidewalks. I'd like to see this be in there but come out of the unassigned fund balance which is something that's going to need to be done probably Maybe we can, we're going to start doing this every year, right? That's what, that's what a capital reserve fund will do. Right. So yeah. can we initially take 100000 out of the unassigned fund balance to start it so we don't have to have right. time? Oh, you can take anything out you want. Just you're going to eventually deplete the amount of money right. you need. Right. Um, you got to be careful on how much you take. That's right. all. I'd move to hold this for another year. I, I can't support this. Do we have a second? When, can I hear from yep. these guys what they think? Well, sure. 
in jumping on what the chairman said earlier, um, I think we need to, you know, a each year there has to be an effort to address the mm -hmm. major points within the town. Mm -hmm. He wrote, you know, we already have um, the paving line. We already put away 300000 for major capital improvements mm -hmm. that we, you know, that in the future we come up with a um, sewer line. And what was the other one? You had? Oh, drainage. Drainage. Something. In listening to not only this group, but other members of the group, governmental functions, budget committee in particular, why not have a capital reserve fund for it, uh, for sidewalks? That way, because twenty-five thousand, to be honest with you, we're not we're not even painting them. We're not getting anything done. You know, one, we had when we did have eighty-five thousand, we had a hard time finding a contractor that would come in for that little what they considered measly yeah. amount of money. Yeah. So the effort of a hundred thousand was to then have a concerted fund with which to make some improvements from. Secondly, the reason why it's titled and ADA compliance is mm -hmm. anyone who is aggrieved by the Americans with this, anyone who is aggrieved by disability access issues, and you don't have to be disabled, can sue the town over Americans with Disabilities Act. We are behind when it comes to the repairing, upgrading, replacing the number of handicapped ramps we should have, especially at the crosswalks we already have. Um, so, there again, being the captain and vice captain of this ship, <laughs> we have to make people aware that this is an issue that we think should be mm -hmm. One of the other addressed. just costly parts of why we have such a hard time doing it is that many decisions have been made prior to us where concrete sidewalks were paved over. So my demolition and removal cost of sidewalks that don't comply currently is one and a half times the amount it normally would be just to get it to a base <clears throat> so we can start over. So while you brought that up, what's a better way to go? Concrete or asphalt sidewalks? Depends where it is. Depends on where it is. Right now, we look at downtown area as concrete, concrete. sidewalks, yep. mm -hmm. and as we work our way out bituminous Due to maintenance, the, the ability to repair those type of things. <coughs> okay. Yeah. What have we done with our concrete sidewalks to uh, keep them uh, functioning properly? Aren't we supposed we to stick with paint the, them or do something yeah. with them it's each a, year? Well, I can simply answer: sidewalk. the last sidewalks were repaired were the, replaced with the ones right outside this building, and yeah. as the season closed down. They were replaced early in the summer. Yeah. We sealed them with sidewalk with concrete seal. Yeah. And any so, planning board project that goes through, they seal theirs yeah. with it. But so as they're getting built, they're getting sealed. Yeah. Yeah. But referring to the and I appreciate what you're trying to do. You're fulfilling your responsibilities. But I'm I figure that we're being funded to death. I'm getting a little tired of having to set up funds all over the place. And uh, when. Um, John Muxie's daughter was killed January, oh, years ago, because she was running at night at the end of High Street. And uh, there was a big excitement about putting a sidewalk there from Five Corners to Ocean Boulevard. And we put it in, and it's ADA compliant, and people don't run on it. Well, we because it goes up and down, up and down, up and down. We still okay, have I, to supply sidewalks and have I, to supply I, a safe packet. If they choose not to use it, well, that's their own power. But this is, the, uh, I, yeah, I'm not in favor of putting this on the Regina? water at all. Yes, one, I'm in favor for this article, whatever the board, however they want to appropriate it, I don't have a problem with. We need to look at this stuff. I think funding a capital uh, improvement fund for it, this way people know it's something that we're probably going to do every year. They're aware of it. It's never going to go away. The budget increase to public works, can you refresh my memory as to how much of it wasn't contractual or due to uh, wages? It was a very small amount. We pretty much asked for nothing it this was, year. Yeah, the contractual portion uh, or contracts, right. not only labor but physical work contracts, 85% uh, and 15% uh, to, if you will, uh, decision items. But right. a portion of that was even gas and fuel. I mean, everything so. we just talked about, 
it's all infrastructure. It's all stuff that's Correct. never going to go away. Correct. It's like pay now or pay later. I you make know, a motion that we move this. Yeah, forward. I'd like to say one more thing. Okay. I'm getting threatened by the budget committee every single week that we're going to have a default budget. Well, I'll tell you right now, if this town's got to operate on a default budget, there's going to be some serious problems. So I just want to let everyone know in the public that people need to get all the information, in to the total amount of information. And if they don't like the response from the town manager, who is doing what he always does, his job, then you know what? Maybe they should decide how to run a town themselves because I'm really sick of, you know, we got to be the bad guys. We're always the bad guys. And then they can sit in those meetings and say whatever they want about us. And they're going to take it out on public works because public works is what suffers the most in this whole town. Mm -hmm. So I am full with what you want and however you want to do it. And I agree. I think we should have these things. But this way, doing it this way, it allows the voters to decide. Mm -hmm. At some point, we can't, I agree. you know, people have to make up their own minds. Yeah. But they have to make that after they're educated. And I think you guys do a good job of educating. So we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Out of the post. Three, one to post. And the hazardous waste collection. No, you next one is the Molten Road sewer replacement. Oh, see, they got my pages got mixed up in here, I think. Okay. Once again, I, I'm not going to favor that for a vote this year. Um, I, in all honesty, I didn't put a slide together for this one because I had watched the last meeting and I thought you guys had uh, decided not to move this one forward. But the long and short of it is Molten Road. It does not have a drainage system uh, so this project would put one in uh, it would rebuild all the sidewalks along Molten Road mm -hmm. it would also replace all the sewer again it is a clay sewer uh, that goes top to bottom yeah. collects everything on Molten and brings it down uh, to us at the plant uh, it did come with quite a price tag um, at the bottom of the Warren article I tried to give it to you in perspective yeah. because it is longer than Ann's Lane, because it is more pipe, because it is more of everything uh, to do it and to repave it. Uh, it came in at $989,750. I make a motion that we don't move this forward. We don't I'll move second. forward. I'll second. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Now you're at the household hazardous waste thing. Uh, I think some of my I don't even have that one on here. I thought we should. We, we approved that one last time. Yeah, I gave them back. I gave all of them back to you. Maybe they can get copied someplace. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I believe we passed this one last time. We did. Time. Well, yeah. we agreed, but I right. thought that we were waiting until tonight to do. You know, to all right, so I'll make a motion that we pass this Second. one. Second. Yeah. All those in favor? Yeah. Unanimous. Um, Fred, there's a typo in the. I think that's yeah. all of yours. Okay. Yeah, that is. Thank you, guys. Thank you very Thank much you. for coming Thank in. You. We really appreciate it. You, you gave us a lot of insight, and I think that certainly helps. Yeah. And as we move forward, we will be we will be uh, asking the voters yeah. uh, yep. and asking you to inform the voters. Yeah. Great. So we look forward to that. Get some good slides for the deliberative session. Okay. Thank you very much, both of you. Thank you. Thank you.